Hello, everybody out there all across the globe. We are back to the Keith Harris Show. Of course, I am your guy, Keith Harris. You're on the number one station on the net hotline, radio, whlr1.com. And now, without any further ado, I'm going to start my drum roll, roll out the red carpet for this uh, multi-talented young lady. Uh, she's always doing her thing. She keeps a smile on her face, as I noticed, and she is constantly bringing smiles to everyone else as well. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce actress Shelly Reginald. How you doing, Shelly? Hey, Keith. I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on the show. Glad to have you. Listen, you you really are, you know what, you you continue. So you, you always seem so, so happy, so upbeat, and so bubbly. <laughs> I think, you know, look, I think it's a waste of time to be anything less than happy. And uh, so, yeah, I'm always a fan of smiling and, and laughing and, and laughing with others. So I think that's an incredible gift to have, an incredible gift to share. And why not? Let's all do it together. Absolutely. Has that, do you feel like that's been, that, that's been contributed to, you know, has been a contribution to, to also, uh, you know, your success in even being able to play in musicals and, and just having that upbeat tempo, because we know to be in musicals, you're not just acting, but you're actually bringing a livelihood to the, you know, to the stage. Oh, also. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely think that has something to do with it. And, I, you know, it's, it's musicals in general. You know, I, I got involved in doing musical theater from a very young age that, you know, my mom put me in dance when I was like four years old. I was doing school musicals and school plays and and when you do it as a kid, you're doing it for fun. Right. And so when you when you continue to do it and, uh, you know, have dreams and aspirations to do it and, and potentially make some money off of it, you know, I, it's important to remember that uh, why you got into it and that it, it brought yourself joy as well as, you know, bringing joy to audiences watching it, um, you know, and then you just get a perk of uh, getting a paycheck at the end of the day <laughs> sometimes. Look, I know that's right. And, and look, get, yeah. get Getting that pay, have, being able to have fun and get that paycheck, I guess that just makes it all the more yeah, exactly. live. Yeah, that makes the smile a little bit bigger. Right? <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. So, you know, for for the people out there, um, how how did you how did you how did you start off? Because I want to go into the zombie musical in a minute. I got to talk about that. <laughs> I, I don't even know yeah. if I've seen a zombie musical. Wow. No, now you have, and it actually, it, um, it's funny, the, the director just posted that it just came out um, on YouTube, so now everybody can see it, and uh, it's available online now, So, which I'm really excited, because I've had, you know, family members still being like, when can we see this zombie musical that you were a part of, and, you know, we filmed that two years ago, and now it's finally, you know, went through all these film festival circuits, and it did really well, and won a bunch of awards, and now it's finally out the public that everyone can see it so that's awesome and exciting that's right and um listen not to not to toot your toot your horn so early in the conversation but uh best actress in in the musical as well 2014 yes, yes. that's uh I was awarded Best Actress in, uh, for Bite the Musical and, uh, at the Glendale International Film Festival, which is very exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's a, and even, though it's, it, even if it's a, a smaller, you know, festival to be a part of, it's still, you know, it's, it's recognition, and, and I'm incredibly, you know, proud of the project, and I, I'm honored to get recognized for, for the job that I did. It's great. Right, right. Now, starting out, starting out, because I, I know you, you probably knew that you could sing when you were young. Is is that exactly the route that you thought you might take, you know, is, is more in the film and television industry? Or had you had any thoughts of possibly uh, being a, a singer, radio-wise or concert? Uh, you know, I, I truly did not think that I would be um, in the film industry, uh, you know, at, I don't know if I thought I was going to be able to make it there at all. Um, I, I had aspirations to potentially, you know, dabble in that in that field, uh, you know, somewhat later in life. Uh, but I always had my my sights set on Broadway and musical theater, um, which is funny because I'm sitting here in, in New York City right now, uh, and you know, so hopefully I had a few auditions uh, over here. So maybe next time we talk. We'll be talking about more musical theater projects, but um, 
Yeah, I, I had no idea that I would get involved in the, in the film industry at this early on in my career. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it just goes to show you that there is no one direct path mm -hmm. in the entertainment industry for, you know, for each person. It, it, it is very subjective and it is very much your own personal journey. And uh, yeah, so, you know, the, the crazy thing is that I, I'm in the film industry, but it is it has a lot to do with the music industry as well. So okay. I like that it kind of all collaborates together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've always enjoyed singing, um, but I never I never really had the the vision of, of being like a pop star or, you know, the next Gaga or Katy Perry <laughs> or anything. But right. but you know, the more the more you're kind of uh, watching these shows is, is they are putting on a spectacle themselves. So mm -hmm. You know, I'm kind of a all or nothing person, so I've always been like, I want to do it all or I want to do none of it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, go all the way. Well, I tell you what, you're already reaching the stars. What's left now is the moon for you, Shelly. <laughs> you know, now, is, is yeah. it, it talking to a, a lot of people who do the uh, theater, th there's that difference. There's that line between, you know, having to be live and having to be on point, and there not being the, the, the opportunity for do overs or, or, or right. take, yeah, take one or take two. Is it, yeah, exactly. Is, is it even just a little more added on pressure when not only are you acting theater, but now you're singing it as well. So is that like the right. triple threat? Um, yeah, I think it does. It, it, it adds uh, a different level of excitement for me personally. Um, you know, it's just kind of like you've got that one shot mm. and, and like that saying is the show must go on. So if you didn't hit that note or if you messed up a line, you just got to keep going through. Like you said, there are no do-overs, whereas, you know, the, right. the, the lucky part, you know, in, in doing film and, do, and filming on camera, if you do mess up or if you do flub line or, you know, miss something, you can just cut and try it again and do it better. Or, you know, even if you did it fine the first time and, and the director asked, how do you feel about that? You want another take? You know, if you feel like you can do something better, mm -hmm. then you get to do it again. Um, but so I think that, that just adds that that different level of excitement right. more than more than a pressure you know it, it's just that that adrenaline rush of you know uh, and it, I don't know it gives me that tingly feeling that right. um, that you get one shot to do it and and the best part is is that lot of feedback with it as well you know it's not only is it you experiencing it for right. the first time uh, Right. on stage but you're also experiencing it with these audience members that are watching it right. as well so uh yeah it's it's just definitely different right. um and a different excitement kind of kind of thing you know right i, I i've got to ask F fat planet what was that about <laughs> i like the planet. i like the title it's, <laughs> it's catchy <laughs> it, it is pretty catchy um that was actually I, I moved out to LA about three years ago and uh, it was the first feature film that I got cast in uh, as an LA local and uh, so it is a low budget film uh, you know we, we shot out of someone's house um, and it, it's got a great message though it was about um, you know it kind of takes place in a in a different galaxy futuristic world and uh, and is this group of girls, I play the ringleader of uh, this group of girls, and they're part of this, this planet, um, which they called themselves Fat Planet because they were the biggest ones in their, in their galaxy, but it, then it turned out um, to be sort of like the end of the movie Wally, where everybody was just really fat and kind of wobbling around, and so we decided to kidnap this fitness instructor from Earth oh, wow. to, uh, to help us gain control of our resources and uh, live a healthier lifestyle. So I like the message, you know, and I think uh, kind of in this day and age in America, yeah. especially, you know, we, we can all use uh, a little lesson like that. And look, I come from the South, so I know about some home cooking, deep fried food. Oh, yeah. So, you know, yeah, I had to learn that lesson, everything in moderation for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, especially especially uh, Louisiana, because you got, listen, oh, yeah. that, that's where some and good, Southern food is coming they from. Eat some good Southern Creole cooking. Mm -hmm. uh, you will, I can safely say New Orleans has the best food in the nation. <laughs> well, I tell you what, you all took a you, you all took a pretty uh, positive approach to kidnap the the fitness instructor. Uh, the fitness instructor. A lot yeah. of people run the other way. You guys kidnapped them. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, that was, that, interesting. Um, you also, uh, how, listen, you also sung a Whitney Houston song, I Want to Dance with Somebody. How was that I for did. you to, to, to hit those high notes like that? I'm assuming they were high. Probably easy for you, but how was it? Well, you know, it's funny. I, you know, I'm probably one of the palest people you're ever going to meet. You know, my mom's a redhead. I've got the, the freckled skin and, you know, I don't have any, I have no ability to tan whatsoever. Mm. And, uh, and so I don't know where I got this voice from where I always listen to, you know, Whitney and, and Mariah and Christina and, and I, I really just took to their, you know, I, I love their style of singing and, and I love belting out these really high notes so if people had never heard me sing and I sing for them for the first time you know a song like I want to dance with somebody or the weather girls it's raining men they uh, their eyes get so wide and they're so shocked that this soulful voice comes out of my mouth Um, and I think so that's kind of a more of a fun factor for me to surprise people with the style of of voice that I have but um, yeah I auditioned for the first Pitch Perfect movie with that song. Mm-hmm. And I auditioned for the casting director and they told us to sing one of our favorite karaoke songs oh. in the audition to see how much fun you you know you have and just act like you're you're out with, you know, the girls and having a good time. So right. I told them, you know, no one takes on uh, the queen, you know, no one takes on Whitney. So right. they told them I was gonna sing when you use I wanna dance with somebody they basically said, oh, okay, good luck. <laughs> and, uh, and I surprised them that, you know, I, I sang it really well. And, uh, and again, just had fun with the song. So, um, right. yeah, and then, hey, here we go. You know, I got a, got a phone call that I, I booked this role. Uh-huh. And the rest is history, you know. So I definitely have a very soft spot for that song. That's cool. And, and, and you know what? Also, uh, graduating from LSU and then being able to audition at LSU, did, did at LSU? Yeah, it was incredible. Did it feel? Did it? it was, did you feel kind of right at home with that one? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I grew up in Baton Rouge, is my hometown, um, and I didn't, I didn't leave uh, too far away to go to school there. So, and I had just graduated uh, with my bachelor's of theater about four months prior to auditioning mm-hmm. um, for this role. So, and and we auditioned in the building where I had all my theater classes and basically my, my stomping grounds for the last four years. Mm-hmm. And so I knew exactly what room we were auditioning in, you know, where to go. I knew who I was auditioning against. And uh, so, it, yeah, there were no surprises, which is it's kind of, uh, it, it doesn't happen in an audition room. You know, there's always some type of unknown element. Yeah. And uh, so I was, yeah, I, I definitely think I had, had that in my favor of being so comfortable in my environment that you know having that at home feeling just let me be more comfortable in the audition process and and just show my personality i tell you what you know it it, it is definitely on a on a bit of a larger scale but it kind of could give i could see where in a way you were so comfortable because it's almost like auditioning for a school play yeah i almost i almost felt like i was hosting the casting director in my home rather than the other way around you know coming to the room (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that, that look. Now, I tell you what, that is definitely that is a a good positive way to be able to walk into it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And yeah. of course, you know, I, I have that Southern Belle vibe, and right. and I am my mother's daughter. So basically, anywhere I go to, I, I have that hostess gene. So right. <laughs> pretty much, I, I'm just not inviting. You know, I invite all the guests in. So if I can make everyone feel like that, I'm doing my job right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and and I often ask this question. You know, in in this in in your in your career in your line of work, I often ask people if you could play, if if someone could play their dream role, or if they had a dream role, or could write themselves into the character they would want to be. And for you, by you, you know, doing so well and being involved with musicals, that might be kind of a tricky question. But it, mm-hmm. is is there. Is there a dream role that you could see yourself playing in a musical, or is it something you've been able to think about? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, for, for the style of voice that I have, um, I, you know, I, I followed Idina Menzel's uh, career very closely. We, we kind of have a similar style. She's got that big, belty voice. And basically, a lot of the roles that she has originated um, are roles that I would would die to play. So, you know, basically being the Wicked Witch Alphaba and Wicked um, would be 
is definitely one of my dream roles. And uh, actually, you know, that's, that's why I'm here and in New York right now as I, I got the chance to audition for the Broadway show, which is really exciting. So, you know, hopefully maybe making a dream come true and, uh, and not, so, uh, not so far away in the future. Um, but yeah, you know, the show like Wicked or um, I also love the role of the Lady in the Lake and the uh, Spamalot musical. Uh, you know, it's very comedic. But I think for any, for many musical theater people, uh, being able to originate a role is kind of the dream. You know, be a part of an original Broadway music musical where you are the first one to play that role um, is definitely, you know, you're able to bring endless possibilities to the table and then have people after you come in to, you know, reprise that character. So I think that's kind of the dream now. Um, right to be to be able to, to set have the my bar. own original character with my name on it, you know. Right, right to to kind of be able to set the bar, you know, of of, of limitations almost. Absolutely. Right now, challenging. Were you challenged to 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 do a beatbox section or some session or something? About? <laughs> uh, well, I had to learn how to to beatbox for the first Pitch Perfect movie. Oh wow. Um, in the girl group, yeah, they, they hired us all, you know, as actresses and singers and realized uh, after the first day of rehearsal that somebody needs to be the beatboxer of the group because, you know, Hannah Mae, who plays Lily in the movie, she's supposed to surprise us all at the end of the movie with her, her beatboxing skills. So someone else had to lead the charge for the, the remainder of the film. And uh, so I, I volunteered to try and learn how to do it, and I pretty much put myself in a corner with a uh, YouTube editorial video <laughs> <laughs> of a how-to beatbox um, video lessons. And then, of course, our music directors, uh, Dick Sharon and Ed Boyer, were, were such incredible mentors and tutors for me. Um, but, yeah, a lot of a lot of air, a lot of spit. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. So I, I learned how to kind of uh, do the basic beatboxing skills mm. and uh, – so, you know, it, it comes up from time to time. Well, and know, uh, people, what's that? Yeah, I was going to say, well, you know, the basics is all you need with it, pretty much. The basics is all you need, yeah. You just hold down a nice beat and then have everybody else join in for some harmonies, and uh, and then you're creating music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that. yeah I, got to, I got to reprise it a little bit um, in a couple of songs for the second movie, which was really fun, yeah. um, since, since Tana was... You know, the main beatboxer for the second movie, but I got to join in for a couple of songs, which is cool. You know, I, I have to ask you because look, everybody goes through this. I, I went through it coming up, and everybody, especially people who tried to do the beatbox, were you ever uh-huh. at, were you ever just at home sometimes by yourself, just practicing your beatbox? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, when I was learning, I was definitely at, at home just doing it all the time. Yeah. But uh, I do, you know, it, it, it's kind of once you learn how to do it, it's kind of hard to quit. So, you know, I'll find myself every now and then just being around the house. If it's too quiet, I just start making noises. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I said that because it seems like when you're in the process, especially when you have to learn it, it seems like it could just be kind of fun to just be around the house. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's hilarious because uh, when I was learning how to do it, I was actually living at home at the time mm-hmm. uh, since I was we were filming in my hometown. And uh, so I would be making these noises. I told my mom that when I told her I had to learn how to beatbox, and she thought that I had to learn how to fight somebody. She was like, who are you going to be boxing? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to sit her down and explain to her that I won't be fighting anyone, and I'll be <laughs> making drum noises with my mouth. So she's like, what, what noise are you making today? I'm like, I'm trying to do a snare drum. Does it not sound like that? <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah, that, that's why I asked that question because to, to you know when you, when you're at home or wherever you're at and you're doing that and people are not too familiar with it it has to have some sort of comedic element to it to them oh yeah oh absolutely yeah and like I said so much I finally realized why beatboxers cover their mouth so much <laughs> because you don't want to spit everywhere <laughs> the wet shirt and all um <laughs> So that, now, a bit about uh, the TV series TMI Hollywood for the listeners. What is what is that about? Yes, well, it's actually it's a it's a sketch comedy um, series, and uh, 
for the, I just joined it actually. I, I was a, a guest host in, uh, in March of this past year. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they have, they have guest hosts every week. And they ended up, you know, I love being a part of the process so much. It's, it's very much, you know, like the Saturday Night Live where you write comedy sketches and uh, it's, it's once a week and we come on Sunday, Sunday night. Mm-hmm. Um, and it used to be uh, live at Second City in Hollywood. And, but since then, we're actually, um, we're about to open, reopen again July 19th in a new format on Stream TV. Um, so anyone can go online on YouTube and subscribe to uh, Stream TV, and we'll stream our, our episodes live every Sunday night, um, and you can catch TMI Hollywood. And so uh, July 19th, Jim O'Hare from Parks and Rec, he plays uh, Gary, but he'll be the guest host. He's hosted a couple of times before. And so, yeah, the cast uh, will be you know, coming up, and you can catch it every Sunday night on Stream TV, so we hope that people tune in for it. Oh, wow. We're really excited. That's going to be awesome. So so that's uh, that's every Sunday on Stream TV. And then, yes. uh, and also, you uh, to go back, to go backwards a bit, you said Byte will be also coming out on YouTube now. Yes, yes, it just came out, actually, about three days ago. So you can check it out now, Byte the Musical. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so it's actually um, it, it was filmed in Puerto Rico, so it's the uh, international. Um, you you can see it with Spanish subtitles or mm-hmm. catch it in English. So it's, I think it's really cool that it's able to kind of uh, go to international audiences. Okay, okay. And so many people are, are um, familiar with Pitch Perfect. You know, I, I know a few yes. people who love that uh, let um, film. As a matter of fact. And and uh, part two, okay, is part part two is already out for the, for everybody out there, all the listeners. It is, yeah. It came out May fifteenth was the release date. It's uh, it was the number one movie in America. It's opening weekend, and uh, and crazy enough, it is the number one uh, movie musical opening ever. What? And, uh, so ever, yeah. Like it beat Chicago and Greece, and you know all of these movie musical classics that I grew up with, Wizard of Oz. I was like, how the heck did Are we you, beat that? Look, and I, so, look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hosting this show. I should not be surprised by this at all because <laughs> I know what a great show it is. But listen, congratulations to you and the whole team. Uh, Shelly, Thank that, you. That is historical. Thank you. I mean, we are, we are so proud and we're just so honored that, you know, the, the audiences like it and the fans like it so much. I mean, first of all, we had no idea the caliber that it would become uh, based on the first one, but you know the the fans fell in love with it it's enough to warrant us coming back for a second one. And now it's done so well a second time that they've already greenlit a third one. So uh, oh. our writer Kay Cannon is already writing the third script. Uh, it'll be out in 2017. The Bellas will be back. So uh, yeah, there's there's more to come, which is really really exciting. So we're we're very very grateful to all of our fans. And you know what? I I, I don't I don't mean to go back and blow it up a little bit more, Shelly, but I have to. You guys beat Greece. We I know I know that's red. That's big. <laughs> that's huge. That is massive. I mean, I I didn't believe it myself. I actually a, uh-huh. a friend of mine told uh-huh. me that news. Wow. And I, I said, get out of here. Like, don't lie to me. You know, don't want to smoke <laughs> uh, up where, where it shouldn't be. Right, <laughs> and, right. And, uh, you know, okay, lo and behold, it was the truth. And, you know, my jaw probably dropped to the floor just like everybody else. I know that's so, right. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Wow. You know, but it's, it's really exciting. You know, we got to take on songs from Beyonce, which if anybody knows me well enough, they know that I love Beyonce. So. Yeah. I, I was really excited to be able to perform that from right. Whitney to Beyonce, right? Hey, look, you know what? You keeping it? You keeping it on a level? That's what. Look, <laughs> Whitney, Beyonce, your beatboxing, your beat. You're right. You, you know what I'm saying? You, you guys are number one over the hit movies. Listen, you're doing it big, Shelly. Thank you. Absolutely. Listen, congratulations. Uh, look, I, I always have to ask, uh, what what advice would you have for for aspiring artists or, or people coming up that you know? Because you have massive fans, but, you know, people who would like to follow in your footsteps, what, what type of advice would you have? Yeah, you know, it's, it's really about, um, 
it, it's obviously like a lot of hard work. You know, you gotta you gotta take class and be prepared. Um, but but I think the really the thing about this industry is um, half the job is just showing up and uh, you know showing up for that audition or showing up for that meeting, showing up for whatever opportunity um, at the time is, is going to be that right opportunity. Uh, you know, because as we all know, this this is an industry of a lot of rejection and it's a lot of no's. Um, but when it's when it's the right time and the right place and you're prepared for that opportunity, it's going to be that big yes. So I always tell people to keep showing up, you know, as, as discouraging as it may be and as hard as it is at times, if you keep showing up, there's going to be a yes in there somewhere. So that's my advice. That's right. Everybody out there all across the globe, you heard it from, I, I had I had to switch her name from Shelly Reznor to Super Shelly yeah. Reznor. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'll, I'll throw my cape on. Uh, no doubt. Um, and, and one more before we go. I'm going to let you get out of here. But one more before we go. Uh, Tattoo Nightmares, the TV series. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. What, did you you were on that or in a person? I did, How's yeah. That? I, did, uh, I did a reenactment uh, piece. Mm -hmm. on Tattoo Nightmares, which I don't know if you've ever seen the show, but it's an incredible show. Yeah, I've um, heard of it. I haven't watched it. I'm going to now. Yeah, it's on, it's on you know, I, I sadly enough, I'm not sure if it's still on, but if it is, it's so wonderful called Spike TV, mm -hmm. and it's one of those reality shows um, yeah. of, of, you know, and I, it, it's not a story about myself. I did a reenactment story of someone else, but these right. people, um, these everyday people, they have these horrendous tattoos right. and so basically it tells the story of how they came to get this terrible tattoo that is plastered on their body right. and these tattoo artists come in and cover them up and make a whole new masterpiece yeah. to cover up this terrible tattoo and it's, it's truly incredible I and mean, you know as as a creative person you know even if you aren't artistic and in, in like a drawing manner or paint or anything just to be able to watch the creativity and the artistry that these artists it, it really is incredible, and, and to be able to cover something that's right. you know, not to say that's so ugly and make it something beautiful is really incredible. So <laughs> yeah, I'm in. Uh, I, I'm in. Uh, I believe the third episode or something of the first season. But yeah, I'm in there in the in the third uh, the first season. <laughs> you don't catch me. Yeah. I, I play a girl that gives a tattoo to her best friend. Oh, um, on, wow. a, on a really drunken night. So, it's <laughs> yeah. a lesson to be learned. You Don't get you... really drunk and give your best friend a tattoo. <laughs> exactly. You messed it right up. But you know what? Uh, and, and everybody out there knows, though, because uh, Tattoo Nightmares, that was a, a that was a big show. And, and it had a lot yeah. of publicity behind it. Plenty of people know yeah. about that show. Yeah, I know. It was a great show. Definitely. Uh, right. You know, and they have so many different stories. I, I think that's the crazy part is, how many people they actually could find with yeah. really bad tattoos. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, right? Listen, uh, Shelly, look, it's, it's been a pleasure. Look, first of all, we congratulate you on all your success. And, and we know we, we know that success is, listen, you're, 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 you're in the present, you're already bright. You're glowing. And we know the future is going to just continue to illuminate for you. Um, Thank you. I appreciate that. I hope so. Oh yeah. And listen, good 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 luck up there in, in NYC uh, on your upcoming uh, roles and auditions. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, and then and keep on the lookout for news about Pitch Perfect three and and what's to come. Oh, that's gonna look. Keep on breaking records. That's that's listen. That's a, look. Let me send a shout out from myself and on behalf of the rest of the world to you and the whole team and everybody that may be listening on your side. Uh, congratulations to you all. You're doing a phenomenal job, and we cannot wait. Look, um, social media wise, where can people um um check maybe your your uh, show page or your Twitter? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm on. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, and I'm on Facebook. Uh, you can catch me just by my name, Shelly Regner, and I, I usually I keep trying to update as often as I can. So uh, yeah, but I'm pretty prominent on Instagram. I'm a big fan of pictures, so oh. but yeah, follow me on any of those social media just in my name. That's what's up. Listen, everybody out there all across the lane, you've been tuned into the Keith Harris Show with myself, Keith Harris, and the amazing actress Shelly Regner. Make sure you check her out in all of her amazing pay um amazing uh projects listen you also have an imdb page shelly i do yeah imdb okay. uh right at my name and you can find me there 
Absolutely. So everybody, make sure you check it out. Also, in case you tuned in late, uh, I guess, as I always say, you should have been here from the beginning. But in case you tuned in late, um, just know that you can check, catch the full conversation between Shelly and myself posted on social media shortly for playback purposes. Shelly, you the bomb. Keep doing your thing, girl. Thanks, Keith. This was great. All right. We'll be talking to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Everybody out there all across the land, that was actress Shelly Regner in the building. All right. Um, wow. Uh, hey, historical. I, I like to use those terms, historical, because that's what it is, broken every record, as a matter of fact. So if you are not familiar, familiar with Pitch Perfect, make sure you uh, go check it out. Check out the musical, some uh, great singing, uh, as well as some get great acting in there also. All right, so big shouts out to the whole cast and Shelly Reginer as well. You're tuning into the Keith Harris Show. I'm your host, Keith Harris. Don't touch that dial. Number one station, WHRLaw1.com, Hotline Radio. Don't forget to go vote for us, Hotline Radio, um, for the Mixtape Awards. All right? 